Okay, in this chapter, we're going to actually introduce the concept of derivatives, and the act of taking a derivative is actually called differentiation. So derivatives have many applications. Basically, a derivative can tell us the slope of the graph at any point, and this is also the same as telling us that the rate that the graph is changing. As you know, a linear fun function excuse me, has the same rate of change or slope at every point on the line. But other functions, their rates change at different points on the graph. We can also use derivatives to analyze and graph functions. We can find maximum or minimum of functions. We can determine rates of change, and we can also solve applications, velocity, acceleration, and related rates. So we're going to uh, return to the tangent line problem here, and I'll give you a little more detail here about the tangent line problem. Basically, we can summarize the tangent line problem as this. Given a function f of x and a point c f of c, where you want to identify the slope of the graph, from algebra, you know we need um, two points to get the slope. That should be 2, as in 2w over there. Um, so we move to the right of c a number of units. We're going to call that number of units delta x. So we'll call it delta x. Now some texts, especially business calculus texts, will use h instead of delta x. Okay, so if we move to the right of our, of our x value c, we'll get a new x value called c plus delta x, which will then give us a new y value, corresponding y value, f of c plus delta x. So then we would have two points, c, f of c, and then the other point would be c plus delta x and f of c plus delta x. The line that connects those two points is called the secant line, and the slope of the secant line is actually, can be evaluated by f of c plus delta x minus f of c all over delta x. So here's a picture. Um, this is the point c, f of c, and this is the point um, c plus delta x, f of c plus delta x. I didn't line things up perfectly, but hopefully you get the idea. Notice this is right here is where x equals c, and then we're going to travel delta x units to the right, and so this point would be c plus delta x, and so therefore the, the x and y value would be c plus delta x, and f of c plus delta x. And then, of course, if you want to find the slope, you can take f of c plus delta x minus f of c, which is the numerator up here, and then um, if you want to find the denominator of the slope, you just take c plus delta x minus c, and then the c's cancel, and you just get delta x. Okay, so that uh, quotient, this quotient right here, represents the slope of the secant line. But what happens is we really want the slope of the tangent line. So right here, we want the slope of this tangent line. See this red line here? That's actually the tangent line at this point. So we really want the slope of that line. So what we can do is we can shorten this distance. Um, instead of going way over here, maybe we only go to here. And if we go to there, so maybe delta x is only that far away from c. So if we use this point, as our c plus delta x and our f of c plus delta x, then the slope of the secant line would actually be the slope of this blue line that you see that goes through uh, this point and this point. And notice that the green line was the original uh, line that we used, and notice now this blue line, the slope increases a little bit, and notice that it gets closer to this uh, tangent line. And then now watch what happens when we move even closer. So now let me move to this point, and let's see what happens when we move to this point. So if I move my delta x even, or make my delta x even smaller, and move closer to x equals c, then I would be at this point on the graph. And so the slope of the line between this point and the original point would now be this purple. Uh, purple piece right here. Okay, well, if I continued moving closer and closer and closer, like if I got real close, then basically what would happen is, is this line would basically rotate 
keep rotating upward and eventually you would get a line excuse me and get rid of that so you would you would eventually get rid you would actually get a line that still goes through the graph say maybe here and here so you could still get the slope of this line so the slope would still be given by the same formula up here but notice now that this purple line is very close to the slope of the tangent line which is the red line well the concept is if you let this delta x get very very small so that you're actually letting delta x approach zero then basically what will happen is this tangent line will actually turn in to I mean the secant line will actually turn in to the tangent line and so basically the concept is if we let delta x go to zero here if we let delta x go to zero here then what's going to happen is we're going to have just a minute let me get this thing out of the way so basically what we're going to do is we're going to let delta x go to zero in this quotient and by letting delta x go to zero we actually will get the slope of the tangent line so this will actually represent the slope of the tangent line at x equals c so slope of the tangent line at x equals c can be represented by this limit the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of c plus delta x minus f of c all over delta x so if i wanted the graph if i wanted the slope of this graph x squared at x equal to x is the c value at c equal 2 then basically i could evaluate this limit so what I would do is I would find what is f of c plus delta x. Well, c is 2, so that would be f of 2 plus delta x. And then minus f of 2 all over delta x. Well, the function is x squared. So I know to get f of 2 plus delta x, just replace x with 2 plus delta x. So I have 2 plus delta x quantity squared. And then minus 2 squared for f of 2 all over delta x. Well, now, when you square this, you'll get 4 plus 4 delta x plus delta x squared, and then this will be minus 4. But then the 4s cancel. And by the way, you can't actually evaluate this by plugging delta x equals 0 in because you'll get 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form. So we're really looking for a replacement here by doing this. So the 4s will cancel, and then you'll have 4 delta x plus delta x squared over delta x. Well, the good news is, is you can factor delta x out of the top, and you'll get a delta x factor here, and you'll have a delta x factor down here, and you know that as long as delta x doesn't equal 0, then delta x over delta x is 1. So we're actually going to evaluate this limit, 4 plus delta x, now as delta x goes to 0. And now if you let delta x go to 0, you get 4. So now we know the slope of the graph x squared at x equal 2 is actually 4. Okay, do one more. Um, now let's say we want to find the slope of this function square root of x as at x equal 1. Well, again, we use the same formula, the limit of f of c plus delta x, this time c is 1, minus f of 1, f of c, all over delta x. Well, that would be the square root of 1 plus delta x minus the square root of 1. And, of course, the square root of 1 is just 1. So now I can't evaluate this at, as delta x goes to 0 because I'll get 0 over 0. So what I can do is pull out my bag of tricks. And remember, if we rationalize the numerator, uh, that usually works in this situation. So we're going to rationalize the numerator by multiplying by square root of 1 plus delta x plus 1 all over square root of 1 plus delta x plus 1. And then what that does, remember you just square this to get 1 plus delta x, and then minus 1 squared gives me 1. And then 1 minus 1 cancels, and you have delta x on top and delta x on bottom. And then delta x over delta x is 1, so that's just 1. So now I'm evaluating the limit of 1 over the square root of 1 plus delta x plus 1. And now I can evaluate this by letting delta x equal 0. So if I let delta x equal 0, I get 1 over the square root of 1 plus 0 plus 1, 
which is just 1 over square root of 1 plus 1, and that would just be 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 over 2, so 1 half. So the, the problem with doing this is if you go back and say, well, what if I wanted the slope of this graph at x equal, say, negative 1, or the slope of the graph at x equal 3? Well, then um, we'd have to go through all of this process again. Same thing over here. If I wanted the slope of this graph at, say, some other value, like x equal 2 or x equal 4, I'd have to go through this entire process again, by re but I would just replace the, the 1 with whatever the number I was trying to find the slope of or, or the value where I wanted the slope at. So actually, there's a better way to do this, and that's actually instead of using C here, we could actually replace C with X here and here. And then what we would get is we would get a formula that tells me the slope of the graph at any point. And so that formula will actually be a function. So basically, if you want to find the, a formula for the slope of the graph at any point, then we can do it. You can just calculate this limit. So now let's go back to x squared and let's calculate the limit of this difference quotient. So let's evaluate this limit now. Instead of using a particular value, let's just put x in here. So again, it's f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x as delta x goes to zero. Then you're going to, you're, basically since we're, the function is x squared, we have to square this. So if you square that, you get x plus x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared minus x squared because that's f of x. And then subtract the x squareds and you get 2x delta x plus delta x squared over delta x. Then you can factor the delta x out. And remember delta x over delta x is 1. And then we get 2x plus delta x. And now you can replace delta x with 0 and get that the slope of that function can be represented by the formula m equals 2x. So now if x is 2, I can just plug 2 into this here for x and get that the slope is going to be 4. If x is 0, plug 0 in for x and I get the slope is 0. If x is negative 3, plug negative 3 in for x and I'll find that the slope is negative 6 when x is negative 3. So that's much better than actually having to go through that difference quotient for each value of x. Let's find the formula that tells me the slope of the graph of square root of x. So again, we're going to evaluate the limit of this difference quotient. And so f of x plus delta x would be the square root of x plus delta x minus the square root of x all over delta x. And then remember, we, we can uh, rationalize this. And actually, this should say square root of x right there, um, not 1. That, that just copied over from the previous problem. So you have square root of x plus delta x minus square root of x. Now, when you multiply uh, this together by its conjugate here, you're going to get square root of x plus delta x squared, which is x plus delta x, and then minus the square root of x squared would be minus x. And then, of course, x and minus x cancel, and you get delta x over delta x, which, of course, is just 1. So you end up with 1 over the square root of x plus delta x plus the square root of x. And then if you let delta x go to 0, you just get 1 over square root of x plus square root of x, which is 1 over 2 square root of x. And if you take a look down here, you can see that I said um, find the slopes of these graphs for these particular values, 3, 4, 5, negative 1. Now, I've already done uh, this one for several values, so let's not, I'll just go through this quickly. For 3, it's 2 times 3 is 6. 4, 2 times 4 is 8. For 5, 2 times 5 is 10. And for negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Well, for square root of x, remember this represents the slope. So for 3, you just put 3 in for x, and you get 1 over 2 square root of 3. For 4, you can put 4 in, you get 1 over 2 times square root of 4, which is 1 fourth. For 5, you get 1 over 2 square root of 5. For 0, you actually get uh, no slope because uh, 1 over 0 is undefined. And actually at negative 1, um, negative 1 is not even in the domain of the function. So you can't evaluate uh, the slope at negative 1 because the, the function has no value at negative 1. Now, I'll go ahead and talk about the definition of the derivative in the next video.